as we move through the century, we see a transformation. So our first transformation is the robe a la Francais, which had a full you know, pleated cut the back and a fitted front. Uh, that's the image that, that you see here. You see a little bit of lace peeking out um, from uh, from the neckline so and you see the fullness the fullness of the sleeve um, um, so we you know we see the this style um, start to evolve from the previous image that we saw that had um, you know a really full 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 skirt and um, you know at this time dresses had open bodices and skirts that allowed for the de decorative display of, of petticoats. So petticoats now became um, part of the actual, the actual garment. And, um, you know, we see a lot of decoratives. We see a lot of artificial flowers and ribbons. Um, we see formal gowns um, in their petticoats that were often made from the same fabric since the petticoat was now part of the garment. Um, we give that, you know, by making them out of the same garment, it gives the appearance that they are a single garment. Um, and these, you know, extremely wide skirts show off the elaborately patterned fabrics used in used in full dress. So, you know, decorative fabrics were worn um, in English, French courts, and even in American upper societies. Um, and this continued through the turn of the century. So then we get to the very end of end of our century, and we do see um, that the robe à la française was modified um, and replaced the 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 hoop, the petticoat was replaced with with hip pads and. You know, excess fabric was pulled through um, through the slits in such a way that the bunch fabric held um, held together to form, you know, to form some some drapery. So the image that we see here, we see um, we see that they've gotten a little bit shorter, but the wideness, the fullness of the skirts um, no longer continued. So references also indicate contemporary references also say that you know false rumps, so junk in the trunk, false rumps were filled with cork and other like cushioning materials um, for for women to to sit on so we just do see a modification of of dress we see it full but full in a different way so not full necessarily from a petticoat or a hoop but just through padding and draping of of the fabric um, so we do see um, you know less draping but we do we still continue to see you know silk brocades and flower patterns and like colors um that were widely used in uh, widely used uh, in the upper classes then we get to hats i'm a hat person i love a hat or a head wrap i told you guys that a hat or a head wrap or some kind of head covering so we get to we get to that and you see across the across this century, this timeline, um, how elaborate <laughs> they become, right? We start with some very simple, well, we first we start with a typical hairstyle um, in, or in a cap that was at the beginning of the century. And then we see something, um, the, the collage, which is a folding hood that was worn that is a little bit more um, sedate. And then we move along to what the upper classes were wearing and they get crazy, right? So, um, you know, we see in 1770, in that image from 1775, um, you know, a, an elaborate wig that has, you know, beads and furs and feather and lace. It has a lot of decoration. Um, we get to the hedgehog hat in 1789 at the end of the century. And I feel like the whole kitchen sink is in there. Uh, along with that that late 18th century um, style. Now, mind you, these are the, the last three are what the aristocratic and upper classes would have worn. But you know, for us regular folks and for the poor, they would have continued with the styles that we see at the at the beginning. So 
you know, um, the collage or just an indoor cap or really just a scarf hung over, hung over their head. So let's talk about about uh, footwear. Um, and actually, before we get to that, let's even talk about stockings. So uh, much like the 17th century, footwear, stockings and footwear for men and women didn't vary greatly. So men and women both wore stockings. Um, stockings were you know, generally made of wool, um, fabrics, uh, I'm sorry, shoes had pointy toes and high heels and tongues and you know, side pieces and buckles um, for men and women. They pretty much were the same, the same type um, type of shoes. You know, there were still the wearing of mules, but um, sh boots were lace up and they often reached the calf, uh, at least the ankle, but often the calf. Um, so men and women still wore the same, the same type of, of, of footwear. What what was added was um, a clog or a patten, a patens with an S on it. Um, it's just an overshoe that protects against um, muddy or, or wet surfaces. And oftentimes it was made of matching fabrics. Um, it had a sturdy leather sole and, and button um, built up arches. Um, so that, that just kept the clog in place. And, you know, country people wore wooden clogs or metal patents to just raise their shoe out of the mud um, and, and clogs the 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 style of a clog has not changed much in 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 really 300 300 years um, but the clogs were worn generally just to keep your foot out of the muck okay so we've made it to the end of the of the um, 18th century and if we look at at the image here um, we start with the Rococo uh, period and we we end off with something that is much less ornate um, not necessarily less ornate less full that's probably a better word that's a better word to you so um, as as always we you know see the theme of you know social class structure and social roles really stand out clearly um, in, in the 18th century and um, when we move on to the 19th century we're really going to focus on the clothing of the well-to-do um, just because I mean, it's, it's like that in every century right because the pictorial evidence of that clothing is really preserved um, in museums and we're going to in the next chapter we're also going to be talking about the French the French Revolution and just the change so uh, the change in what was happening in 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 Europe and and also what was happening in in the United States just that change in mindset to move, that move away from from the monarchy. So we will see um, we will see how clothing is going to become more simple and practical. Um, we will see some reflection on what fashionable dress is even for for the upper the upper classes. So. You know, even though there were social class distinctions um, that permeated society, you know, the decorative dress of service of the nobility was uh, a statement, uh, a sort of of this this status, uh, th this classist classist status. So, um, all right. So that's what we're going to end for now. Um, you have a article to read and a video to watch, of course, of what it's like to get dressed in the 18th century.